Hey there everybody. Uh, welcome to the recap video for the December 18th, I had to look at the calendar, um, Thursday team meeting. You'll have to excuse the uh, background in here. I'm trying out my camera on the computer and the ceiling in the office is missing and I'm realizing that that's showing in the video. So less than glamorous background, but we'll get through it. Um, so I wanted to go through a little bit of what we covered during the um, the Thursday meeting that we had, um, we talked about some holiday discomforts and some of the Young Living products that you could use to help alleviate those. There's a ton of information available in your desk reference, so I highly encourage you to get that out and look things up for yourself. These were just some ideas that I came up with and some suggestions of oils that we have used in the past to help kind of support these issues or um, encourage healing in these areas, however you want to word that FDA compliantly. So uh, the first one was stress. I can't tell you how many people I have heard say how stressed they are this time of year. People put your stress away on. <laughs> it's perfume this time of year. Um, a little bit of stress away in place of perfume, some joy over your heart. Any of those would work great. Some of the other things that would work would be taking a couple of deep breaths of frankincense first thing in the morning. Uh, that has a very calming effect. Any of the other calming oils, lavender, peace and calming, tranquil, any of those, put them in a diffuser. Diffuse them in your car if you're traveling. Wear them as perfume. That'd be great. Um, travel anxiety. Valor is a lot of times known as the giver of courage. So regardless of what kind of traveling you're doing, a little bit of valor on the bottom of your feet would go a long way. Um, and then also any of those calming oils that we just talked about for stress would also be um, great ones to wear on a terracotta pendant diffuser, leather diffuser, um, diffuse in the car, at home, put them on your feet, whatever you need to do for that. Um, germs. <laughs> While I was coming up with this list, I was watching my children sneeze all each on each other and I thought, oh, you get family together, you get germs together. So to avoid any of those hitchhiking back home with you, thieves on everything, thieves on your feet, um, any of the thieves products that you can take with you, the hand sanitizer, the sprays. If you're the one hosting, diffuse thieves while everyone's in your home. Uh, put the thieves soap at your sinks, clean your house with the thieves cleaning spray. Um, take the lozenges and the thieves mints with you. It's a great way to get some thieves oil into your body. Anything you can do to get that thieves in is going to be a great support for your immune system. Uh, the other thing would be Ningxia Red. Um, I highly suggest adding that to your daily morning routine. Two ounces or so is what we normally do. Um, it's going to be a great support for your immune system. Any of the other oils that have great immune supporting properties, lemon, purification, those kind of oils would be great to put on your feet, to run in the diffuser, any of those kind of things. Um, headaches are a big one this time of year. Not necessarily headaches caused by your family. We don't really have an oil for that, but um, an oil to support um, your body while you have a headache. I don't know how you want to word that FDA compliantly, but peppermint is always our go-to for this. Uh, a little bit on the temples, a little bit behind the ear. Um, I always find that that provides a lot of relief. The other thing to consider is look at what's causing your headache. Is it a sinus headache? Is it a tension headache? Is it because of low blood sugar? Is it because it's a full-on migraine? Um, the oils that you're going to use to help those issues are going to each be a little different. So in the case of a sinus headache, I would turn to some lavender for some support. Um, for blood sugar, I would look at Ningxia Red or Cinnamon Oil. Um, for a tension headache, I'd get that stress away back out again. So depending on what your need is, you could turn to some variety of oils for those. Um, any form of indigestion or upset stomach, this is going to be huge this time of year. We all overeat. We all eat things we shouldn't. Um, Digize is going to be my main go-to for any kind of digestive support, whether it's the constipation end of the spectrum or the diarrhea end of the spectrum. Digize is going to support the whole shebang. Um, you rub a little on your belly. Other oils that are good for supporting digestive systems, uh, fennel, ginger, peppermint, 
all of those are going to be great. Rub them on your belly, put them um, a drop under your tongue or on the inside of your cheek. Peppermint, you do want to be cautious of using, uh, well actually peppermint and fennel. Um, be cautious of using, if you're pregnant, um, you wouldn't want to maybe slather that all over your belly. Um, sleeplessness is another uh, common issue this time of year. The first suggestion I have is not at all oil related, but it works. Get a pad of paper and a pen and all of the stuff that's in your head, write it down. Get it out of your head. Um, once you do that, keep the pad of paper beside your bed. And when you wake up at two in the morning and you have some nagging thought that you're afraid you're going to forget, write it down and then you don't have to worry about remembering it. After you've done that, uh, go back to some of those oils that we talked about for stress relief. A lot of those are very good for helping promote relaxation and sleep. So the Peace and Calming, Lavender, Tranquil, Rudavala, Cedarwood, um, a lot of people find great support for, for helping sleep with those oils. Um, in a diffuser, on your feet, whatever's going to work for you. Try one or two. Um, if those don't work, try different ones. Try putting one on your feet, one in a diffuser. Come up with a combination that's going to work for you with that. Um, another thing to consider is we do this for our children and then we kind of forget it as we get older. Your body needs a routine to tell it that it's nighttime, that it's bedtime, it's time to wind down and go to sleep. So work on establishing a routine. No electronics for at least an hour before bed. Um, don't get into reading some murder mystery that's going to have your heart rate way up. Um, you know, do things that are calming, things that are quiet, prayer meditation, maybe write in a journal. Um, you know, if drinking something warm helps, avoid caffeine. I would certainly avoid Ningxia Red or Ningxia Nitro. Um, personally, I have to avoid them starting about 1 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon or I don't, I am not able to relax and, and get to sleep. Um, but you know, set up that routine. Your body's gonna key into those things and know that it's time to relax. Um, a couple other things to try would be sleep essence. I've heard a lot of people say great things about that one. I personally haven't tried it. Um, the other one that you could try is Immu Pro. That's gonna be kind of a dual purpose for you. It's great immune support, so you're gonna help with those hitchhiking germs. Um, but it also has melatonin in it, which is great for encouraging sleep. Um, any of these suggestions are also going to be good for the over-anxious, over-excited, wound, tighter-than-a-top child that's going crazy because there's a Christmas tree in the living room and Santa Claus is coming and the elf on the shelf is everywhere. Um, so any of those calming, sleep-enhancing suggestions would also work to help calm that child. Um, I wouldn't necessarily start feeding them Immupro just to get the melatonin in them, but uh, the oils would certainly help. Another complaint I've heard is brain focus. Um, just being able to focus on getting your to-do list done. Everybody has a to-do list this time of year and trying to get it all finished up can be kind of a bear. Um, brain power, I find on my brainstem, works great to help focus my mind. Clarity is another one, either in a diffuser or um, across my forehead. Um, obviously, I don't have it on right now. I'm forgetting my words. Um, so clarity, motivation is another great one. Any combination of those three, I've found that I can really plow through a to-do list quickly um, and not be distracted by every little speck of dust in the house. So those would be great. Um, Ningxia Red is another good one. If the brain fog is caused because of lack of sleep or because you're overly tired or stressed or anxious, um, you know, I, the last couple times I've done uh, Ningxia Nitro, I have noticed that my mind is razor sharp. Um, so I certainly wouldn't hesitate to start your day, if you know you've got a lot to do, start your day with a little pouch of Ningxia Nitro. Um, it's going to give you the energy to get through the day and it's going to help, um, you know, at least for me, it helped um, kind of focus my mind so that I could, you know, keep clear, coherent thoughts and get things done. So then that leads into the next one is low energy. We're tired, we're stressed, we're anxious. We can't get our brain to focus. We have low energy. Everything is requiring our attention. Um, the blend energy is great for that. It's very um, stimulating, I guess. Um, peppermint is another one that's very, very awakening. So 
um, taking a whiff of it, putting a little drop under your tongue. It's a great one to use while you're driving if you start to kind of get that road weary. Um, you know, certainly stop at a rest area, run around the car a few times, don't keep driving and have an accident. But um, peppermint's a great one to reach for in that case. Um, a lot of the citrus oils can be very invigorating. Um, and then also your Ningxia Nitro and your Ningxia Red. Both of those um, can help with energy. Um, for kind of the midday, got the munchies, need a little bit of energy support, the Wolfberry Crisp and the Sleek Bars would be great to have for um, just some afternoon snacking. They're going to be a healthy whole food type of snack, so you're going to get that good for you energy out of it. Um, you know, may not want to give any of that to the kids if they're already pretty well hyped up on Christmas cookies and the tree in the <laughs> living room. So um, that was just a few of kind of the holiday condition issue ideas that I came up with. And like I said in the beginning, certainly check your desk reference if there's something specific that you're struggling with. If you don't have a desk reference yet, uh, I certainly encourage you to get one. It's your Christmas present to yourself. Go to Abundant Health the number four and the letter u.com and that's where you're going to find those desk references. Uh, we have been hearing that the new edition is coming out anytime between now and around the 22nd or so so you could be looking for that new edition to come out and like I said wrap it up it's a Christmas present to you it'll be the best investment you've ever made beyond your starter kit. So the second half of the call we talked about the importance of setting goals and I won't get into a whole lot of detail with this um, just because I intend to put it all um, on the, the website in, in the typed format that I have it. But basically, I kind of reviewed um, what we did when we went to Las Vegas for the Ula Palooza in November. It was a intensive weekend of goal setting, basically. And it looked at um, the Ula lifestyle. It, it revolves around having seven Fs in your life. I'll see if I can get them all in the list. Um, fun, family, finance, faith, field, fitness. Oh, there's always one I miss. Um, family, friends, fun, field, faith, fitness. Okay, anyway, you get the idea. Um, each of those areas needs attention in your life and needs to be balanced. And when it's not balanced... Um, they, they compare it to being spokes on a wheel. When one of your spokes is missing, your wheel has a flat spot in it. So each of those areas needs to be balanced for the wheel of your life to continue to spin evenly and, and smoothly. So we spent a lot of time looking at where we stood in each of those seven areas. And it was, it was hard at times, um, you know, to really take that introspective look and be honest. Everybody wants to say, oh, I've got that balanced. I go to church on Sunday and I talk to my friends and I'm really good at balancing my checkbooks. So I've got all those balanced. It's no big problem. Um, but when you really start answering some of the questions that they ask, you realize that there's some serious deficiencies in at least my personal wheel. Um, they got into them talking about things that block us from achieving our goals in those areas. They call them the ULA blockers, and it's things like envy and fear, um, um, guilt, um, self-sabotage, laziness. So if you you know, try to set a goal and in your mind you're already telling yourself, oh, that's stupid. There's no way I'll ever be able to do that. I've never managed to do that a day in my life. You know, you're sabotaging yourself before you've even gotten started and you're going to prevent yourself from ever achieving that goal. Um, so we really looked into some of those and, and it was a deep, heartfelt, you know, there were tears and it was hard. I mean, you know, when you get into saying, I'm, I'm not in the shape I want to be, and I'm not as good a mom as I could be because of that. And you realize that it's that guilt that you have that's keeping you from going forward in that area. You know, that it's a hard thing to open up and admit. But once you do, it frees you up and it allows you to then, um, you know, make some goals for that area and actually open your body up and open your mind up to being able to achieve them. Uh, so then they got into talking about the ULA accelerators, things like wisdom, and um, I'm trying to find all this on my notes. 
um, wisdom, gratitude, discipline, love. Um, these are all things that are going to make it easy for you to achieve the goals in those seven areas. Um, we spent the weekend then writing goals for our 2015 in each of those seven F areas. We had to write three goals. Uh, the thing you want to keep in mind when writing goals, not just for young living business growth, but young or uh, your life in general, you want them to be smart goals. You want them to be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely or time oriented. Um, so what I mean by specific, saying I want to be in better shape, that's really a vague thing. Um, so saying I want to be able to run a mile in eight minutes and keep my heart rate under a certain number. Um, that's a much more specific thing that gets into your M, which is also then measurable. It is a goal that you can actually, you know, check off milestones. Did you run it in eight minutes? Yes. Is your heart rate under this number? Yes. Great. You achieved your goal. Was it not? Nope. Okay. Well then you still got work to do. Um, so the more specific, the more detailed your goals can be, the more measurable they can be, the better off. Um, saying, I just want to be stressed less, or I want to be in better shape, or I want to talk to my friends more. Those are all very, very vague. They're hard to measure. It's hard to know, did you talk to your friends more? How much is more? Um, so specific and measurable, attainable and realistic kind of go hand in hand. These need to be realistic things. I can't sit here and honestly tell you that my goal for 2015 for my fitness F is to go climb Mount Everest. Um, it's not going to happen. Um, I know it's not going to happen. For one, I don't have the desire to do that. And two, it's, it's an, you know, an unrealistic goal for me right now. A lifetime goal? Maybe not unrealistic. But to say I'm going to pull that off in 12 months... Um, you know, it's not a realistic thing. It's okay to dream big, but there's a difference between dreaming big and going totally out in left field with fiction. Um, so keep it realistic. Keep it something that you can attain. If you go way out in left field and my goal for 2015 is to climb Mount Everest, I'm setting myself up for failure. I'm, you know, I'm starting off and, and knowing that I'm not going to pull that off. So how is that a motivating goal for me. Um, the other thing is timely. Make sure you set a deadline for these things. We've all seen this with our kids. If you're a teacher, you know how this works. We seem to forget it for ourselves as adults, but when you set a deadline for something, it's much more likely to get done. When you tell your children, I need you to clean this up sometime, or you tell them, I need you to clean this up before supper, one of those two things is going to happen much sooner than the other. You gave them a deadline. I need it done before this specific time. It's going to get done before that specific time. Do it sometime leaves it totally up to their discretion. And your definition of sometime may be nothing like their definition of sometime. So when you write a goal for yourself, put a deadline on it. Make yourself stick to, by October 15th, I am going to run a marathon. Register for the marathon now. Give yourself a deadline for that. Um, that actually happens to be a goal that my husband set, and he has registered for a marathon to hold himself to that deadline. Um, you're much more likely to achieve these goals if you do that. Um, part of what I'm going to post with this video is um, a goal setting sheet that I was actually given by my sister-in-law, and it's, it's for young living business growth, so it has things like total number of members on your team, your total group volume for your team, how many new people for the month. Um, I also add things like um, if I have in mind I want a certain number of people to be a certain rank underneath me or I know if I want my rank to be a certain place at a certain time. Um, fill that out. It's specific. It's detailed. It's a measurable thing. Um, it's also a calendar. So it is time oriented. You know, by April, this is what this will look like. Um, my sister-in-law actually encouraged me at one point. I filled one out, and our team was adding 15 to 20 people a month consistently. So when I filled mine out, I wrote down that I was going to have 15 new people a month. And I put that on every blank for the whole year. It was a safety goal. Um, it was very conservative. It was safe. I knew it was going to happen. So I knew I wasn't going to be facing disappointment. Um, 
I didn't stretch myself though. I didn't push myself to try to better that. Um, so something my sister-in-law encouraged me to try was to write down one that is your, your realistic goals, your down to earth, your not getting crazy, just your plain old regular realistic stuff. And then take the other sheet and do it again, but this time do it with crazy goals. Um, you know, and this is where you might throw that attainable and realistic part of the SMART goal kind of out the window for this particular exercise. Um, her example was that she wrote down that her new people per month was going to double. 50, then 100, then 200, then 400. And she made the comment that when she wrote that down, when she wrote down the number 400, it just blew her mind. And she had no idea how that was ever going to possibly happen, that she was going to add 400 people in a month to her team. By writing it down, you put that energy out there. And by putting that energy out there, you open up the possibility that it can. Um, she very quickly realized that her team did in fact add 400 people that month. It may have been the next month, but it happened. Um, she put that out there to the universe and allowed her mind to consider the possibility. So do your conservative goals, but then do your radical out there. If I could have it any way I wanted, um, I found that that one was very hard for me to do. Even trying to be radical, I was still being very conservative. My radical was still pretty tame. Um, we as a culture are trained to doubt and trained to question and trained to be hesitant. Um, you know, try to shut that part off for just a few minutes and just really let yourself play the what if game. You know, what if you did add 400 people to your team this month? Wow, you know, I mean, that would be huge. What if you hit the rank of gold next month? Um, so really let your imagination take over there. And, and not just with the Young Living part of it, but, you know, maybe with those seven Fs, you write your three goals. They're things that are attainable. Write a fourth goal for each of the Fs and make it something that's totally out there. Um, you know, for me, a totally out there goal for fitness would be to run a marathon. Um, I mean, right now, that's that's like a no way, you know, pigs would fly first kind of goal. Um, but, you know, maybe put that out there for the universe. Um, you know, maybe for, for finance, it's I'm going to be debt free by the end of the year, including my mortgage. Okay, that could totally blow your mind. And the reality part of you is saying there's no way that's going to happen. Um, but put it out there, you know, see what happens if you write that down and just put it out there. Um, the other trick to that that my sister-in-law passed on is that you have to put it someplace that you're going to see it and you're going to read it frequently. You can't just stuff it in a drawer and never look at it again. You have to read it every morning. Um, when she wrote that crazy goal of 400 people a month, she put that on her bathroom mirror, I believe is what she told me. And every morning she saw that and in her head she read that 400 people a month to my team. It keeps it in your mind and it keeps your mind processing that and working on it and thinking about it. Um, so if you write down that crazy goal that I'm going to be debt free, including my mortgage by the end of 2015, put that in a prominent place where you're going to see it inside the cupboard where you reach for a coffee mug every morning, inside your medicine cabinet when you go to brush your teeth first thing in the morning, tape it to your lamp beside your bed so it's the last thing you see at night. Um, you know, make sure it's prominent and you can see that um, you don't necessarily have to share it with anybody else. Uh, just make sure that you can see it and you can read it. If you aren't writing goals, you don't have a plan. Um, you can spend a lot of energy and a lot of effort taking action and doing things, but if you don't know where you're going, how do you know that the effort and the energy that you're putting into it is moving you in a direction you want to go? Goals are your roadmap. They're your plan. They can always be changed. They can always be altered. Um, just because you write them down today doesn't mean that three months from now you're permanently stuck to them and you have to do them no matter what. Um, situations change. You know, they change your goals to match that. But it gives you an idea of where to focus your energies and where to direct your attention. Um, personally, I will say that by the end of our ULA weekend, I 
came to the realization that my schedule had been dictating me and that that was not how I wanted to live my life. I was missing things with my kids and with my husband and with the rest of my family. I was missing opportunities in my faith. I was um, not paying as much attention to my finances and my fitness as I wanted to be um, because I was letting certain F's dictate everything and the schedule was running over the top of me instead of me dictating the schedule. Um, and through the course of the weekend and looking at what goals I was writing, I came to realize that. And, you know, it was a, a huge moment for me and it's allowed me to take a step back and say, you know what, no more. I am in charge of my life. I am going to put first the things that need to come first. And when I make an effort to do something, it's going to be to do something that I feel is valuable and important. It's not going to be to do all this frivolous, fluffy stuff around the edges if I have time to do that later, it comes later. Um, but it really is allowing me to see a roadmap before me and direct my energies in a very deliberate manner so that I can um, really achieve the things that I want to. So that was, I know, probably a little longer than I intended to get into, but um, I wanted to put that out there. As far as um, things that I'm going to put with this video, I will put the link to the ULA website. So if you have not looked into what is ULA, you can certainly do that. I encourage you to. I, I strongly encourage you to pick up a copy of the book and read it. It's a fantastic, fantastic book to read. Uh, the program is great. Um, I'd love for anyone who's interested to join us in Las Vegas next year for the next ULA Palooza. Um, we'll be planning for 2016, so we're looking forward to doing that. Um, I'm also going to put the Young Living Planning sheet that I was just talking about up there. Um, and then I am going to work on, after the first of the year, setting up um, here in the Omaha Council Bluffs area and then up in the Cedar Falls area, some goal planning sessions where we can kind of sit down, feed off of each other, work together, and actually write out some goals and some plans for our year. Um, not specifically Young Living related, you could go that way if you want to, but just goals in general. Um, so that I can share a little more in-depth with you what I've learned. Um, you know, just the energy of people feeding off of each other can be very powerful. So um, I will keep you posted on dates for that. In the meantime, thank you for watching. And um, I will also post a type transcript of basically what I just shared in this video so that if it's easier for you to read it, you can. Um, or if you wanted to print it out and share it with others, you can certainly do that as well. So have a good night. Um, Thank you for tuning in. I also wanted to pass on the next um, Thursday meeting would normally be the first Thursday of January. That actually happens to be New Year's Day, so we are going to cancel that meeting. So our next Thursday team meeting will actually be January 15th. We are going to talk about some Young Living products that will help you meet those New Year's resolutions. And then we are also going to look at the book the Four-Year Career by Richard Bliss Brook. So if you have not read that yet, I strongly encourage you to get a copy of it and read it. There's also an audio CD if that's easier for you. Uh, put it in while you're in the car. It's a really fast book to read, great information. Uh, so that's the next meeting, January 15th, and uh, I'll be sure to send out some reminders before them. In the meantime, have a happy New Year, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate. Enjoy it. Spend the time with your family. Be blessed. Thank you for tuning in. Have a good night.